Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host Mark Corner, just stay by new service, jbstechfelly.com. And as you can see, now the column is for the Jewish press. Yeah, I have a column called Albany Beat, and we talk about how government relates to the Jewish community, or doesn't, as the case may be. And it's uh, really an honor to work for such a prestigious national publication. So I'm uh, very happy uh, to be able to tell you about that. And with us today, time. though, right. speaking of government, <laughs> we have um, a returning guest and one of my favorite assemblymen, Pete Lopez. Thank you, sir. Pete welcome back. Welcome Thank you. Back. Good to see you. Yes, welcome back. Mr. Ronick, good to see you. <laughs> All right, now let me ask you. Got a big agenda. Oh, here we go. Let me yeah. ask you. Got the list. Oh, Put him on the hot go. seat already. What it, Gosh. What, what does the name John Soretto mean to you? John Soretto. Assembly member? Yes. Okay. Quiet, rather demure, Western New York. Now a Democrat. <laughs> is he? Oh, is he? This yeah. is news to you? Well, it's, he switched I'm, his enrollment. I'm not surprised. He's sitting with I'm, the majority conference. I'm in not the assembly. surprised. Only in that I, I know that his district was overwhelmingly Democratic, as I understand it. So, so de almost it was very similar to um, to Mike Spano, who a in number Yonkers. of years ago, in Yonkers. Mm -hmm. It was a, the, the enrollment was really he was swimming against the tide. I always found John to be a, a very decent person. Nothing, um, nothing but controversial. It must be so hard because you're in the minority, of course. Yeah. It's so hard to be in a. It's even a small minority. What is are it, you, 43 out of 150? Now is. 42. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> are, you, All right. are you sorry to see him go? Or I, did you I, interact with I him? I am. And I, 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 there were others, others who, who are still serving. Um, Fred Thiel was another. Well, he's an Independence Party guy. But he conferences with, with, the, the, Democrats. with the majority. And he, yeah. he uh, gleans all the, gains all the benefits of conferencing with the, with the majority. Democrats, yeah. So... so I would say it's a sad commentary that he felt not not if it were if it were a matter of conscience and philosophy that that's God bless him that that's his own. That, he that's said his it own wasn't decision. politics. That's his own decision. He said my, it wasn't politics. My, my sense is <laughs> it, it may have been a, a, a pragmatic uh, decision. Just to get elected. In, in yeah, and, get and elected. so and so ultimately, when, when you think about the legislature, it's more like the feudal era. So uh -huh. so. And, and it's the, the, the lords and nobles, and they yeah, he didn't want swear to fealty. <laughs> right, they swear fealty to their lord and all the heirs of the court. And, and, and unfortunately, the way they function, all, all the resources are, are, are de delegated in that fashion as well. So Now, you're in the leadership of the Republican Conference, I right? Am. What I is am. your title? I, I'm assistant majority leader. So Assistant yeah. minority leader. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so okay. one of those. Minority. <laughs> so here I'm thinking, like you know, to be you're just thinking like majority, yeah. majority, majority, yeah. majority, minority, you know. So you're assistant minority leader. I'm an assistant. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so the premise there, so though. So this is, you know, I'm surprised that it's the first you're hearing about it. Well, but. only in that I, I, many of my colleagues are very tuned in to blogs yeah. and all those things. I'm not. Okay. So, so my, my focus is in a seven-county district bigger than the state of Rhode Island. So, so my sole focus, I, I like to say, especially this time of year, especially offset. Could you, I mean, this is a new office, this is minority, so minority leader is Brian Cole? Brian Cole, right. So you're yeah. next in line. Well, there, there's a whole, no. there's he, a series he's fourth of different in line. Line. So, so it's <laughs> my minority conference, I guess, is uh, assistant leader to the minority conference. And that's, right. They, they have different titles, but to me, the title is a title. Right. And I, I don't. What kind of responsibility is there? To... Basically, our goal is to help assist newer members and, and help them with issues, help them with, with um, decision making, help them with dealing with matters in their district, uh, help them interface with with uh, different personalities in Albany. So it's it's more of a mentoring role than than anything else. So so we have any number of new members who, who are. Good people, but have to learn the ropes. So, so our job is to help provide support for that. Right, well, I also have to uh, give you a big mazel tub on okay. getting married. Well, thank uh, you. Since the last thank time you. you were here, thank and you. Oh, you're, as yeah. it says on your website, wife and committed partner, Bridget. She is. So. Yeah, she is. She's beautiful. 
who mm -hmm. shares his passion for serving others. She does. So she does. Hopefully you blessed. too. I'm very <laughs> Not blessed. just others. <laughs> I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed. But yeah. yes, so uh, best you. of uh, best of everything in the future Thank for, you. with your new with your new wife. Thank you. Um, I wanted to also mention that you're on the Alcohol and Drug Abuse Committee. I am. I am. Uh, uh, alcoholism, rather, and right. Drug Abuse Committee. Right. The Corporations, Authorities, and Commissions Committee, Agriculture Committee. Right. This is a big one, Education Committee. Huge, a huge issue. Because that's just this year you just got put on the, that. The, well, this is my second year second on year. education. But yeah. again, we, we've been dealing with very large critical issues statewide. Mm -hmm. So whether Environmental Conservation yep. Committee. And now I'm happy to see that you're a member of the Black Puerto Rican Hispanic and Asian Legislative Caucus. I am because for many years so, they weren't letting they were only letting Democrats I, in. I'm a minority in the minority, so, <laughs> so it's, it's okay. So, so there's, but it's there's been, a lot of I questions. think you're the only Republican in. I am. Yeah. I am. Okay. That's <laughs> true. But so many issues. I'm Mark rattling off so many uh, committees and well, there's there's so many one issues. More. Oh, even more. The right? Task Force on Farm mm -hmm. Family, fa Food, Farm, and Nutrition. Right. Policy. So many issues there that you have to deal with. Oh, absolutely. But, you know, the, I mean, I have so many questions, just starting with the alcohol and drug abuse. You know, that's always there to, or, I mean, as a rabbi, you have to deal with social issues. You think right. rabbis only the Talmudic and the laws, but we're almost, like I say, honorary social workers because that's we see be. a lot of that. It's, is there any way to combat that? They're saying heroin is bad now and oxycodone and people are just taking any kind of drug and I, and, I, and I say you know I don't know I mean I I'm more of the the conservative political viewpoint and I just say mm -hmm. I don't want marijuana you know uh, legalized yeah. and people counteract with me and to be arguing well you know alcohol hurts a lot of people too mm -hmm. you know and in a way it's a drug you don't call it a drug but you say alcohol right. drug abuse and it hurts your liver alcohol uh, yeah so I, I don't even have a good excuse to, I mean I know I don't want that banned because you have to make kiddish on the Friday night you know I mean you know but everything the, in its yeah, proper but, setting but the uh, marijuana is medical marijuana yeah, but I'm in Colorado. I mean, the and next step would be some, just, right, you know, a lot of people saying, oh, it's a billion dollars and the taxes. Sentiment. And these are conservative people right. telling me, Rabbi, you know how much money the state is losing? Right. You know, Colorado's making uh, whatever, millions of dollars, whatever they're making, and New York could make that much money if they legalized it. Well, same thing with casinos, right? S syntax. I know, I know but... I don't know. I I have a moral issue against it. I can't accept. It. I don't know what your position. You're entitled I guess to um, that. you know, in terms in terms of my position, you know, certainly we, we want people to care for others. We want people to respect others' rights. We don't want to put people in a position where their use of of a substance puts others at risk. I think that's uh, that's a given for all of us. Uh, on the marijuana piece, I, I would have to say my my position is evolving. I'm conservative like you. And, and in terms of the, the, uh, the focus on medical marijuana, which preceded, my, my, I had voted against that for years. And, and again, the, the premise was the handling and the treatment of it. The first bill that I encountered was a bill that said, oh, we're going to give 12 marijuana plants to a person who's suffering, and that's it. That was literally the bill. I said, well, really, how does that work? So what happens when your, your 12 plants are exhausted? And the sponsors answered, this was in debate. Oh, well, I guess you have to go find it somewhere else. Okay, what does that mean? So the translation was he was going to send people to the street. So my change really came from the belief that if a doctor prescribes it and a pharmacist dispenses it and you have all those controls around it, as you would say, oxycodone, you know, oxycontin, um, it's a controlled substance and you have safeguards around it. So. So ultimately, it's still federally illegal, which I still don't understand how the state can do that in defiance of, of federal statute. Uh, I did vote for it this year. And, and what caused me to do it, uh, we have a, a young lady who... What's the medical for issue? For the medical. Yeah. Uh, what caused me to, to change my vote, we have a young lady who suffers from grand mal seizures. And it's been brought to my attention that, that medical marijuana provides the most effective relief for her. So, so... So back to your point about the, the, the use that of it every day. against that, like yeah. that. Obviously, there's steroids. Baseball players exactly. can't take it. And my right. sister's an uh, oncologist, and she uh, says, yeah. I prescribe that every day. I mean, if you need it, you need it. So right. that's understood. So, so back to recreational use, I, I do struggle with it. And, I, and I, guess, 
look at prohibition and, and the whole culture around prohibition. So ultimately, if it were to be allowed, and, and I'm struggling with the decision now, of course, just like alcohol, you use it in the privacy of your home. You, you don't take it on the street. You have open mm -hmm. container laws, so you don't smoke it on the street. You don't drive while impaired. Mm -hmm. so, so ultimately it becomes a function of personal responsibility as to the proper use of a, a, a drug which uh, probably the best argument is akin to the use of alcohol for mm -hmm. recreational purposes. And, uh, and that, that would be my... Case. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's and, a tough issue. And, I, I'm also so, grappling so with it. So the conservative it. element also is, as what you pointed out, is it takes an underground economy and brings it up and then makes it a, a resource for you know, schools it's an and, ongoing and hospitals. Issue. It's a difficult issue. It becomes a taxable revenue. How, how much discussion is there in your committee about heroin abuse? Huge, huge uh, discussion. And the heroin abuse piece is pervasive. And I have rural areas. And you would think that rural areas would be safe from, from any of these social ills. Well, but contrary. they're not. They're no. not. And people are at risk. It's just, sure, because there's, there's, there's less to do in the rural areas, so they gravitate towards the well, experimental you know, substances. They, they, they can, and they and often my, my best my best rationalization of it is particularly in house, households that are struggling economically. So as I look at rural areas, I see many parallels between extreme rural and inner city. So if you look at the demographics, lack of educational attainment, lack of employment. Um, domestic violence, much of it's driven by pervasive poverty. So my best answer to substance abuse is education and empowerment of individuals so that they can stand on their own. Now there'll always be someone who'll test it and try things. Suburban households are not immune from, from drug abuse. No, but, of course but I would have to say it's probably more pervasive in the inner city or the extreme rural where poverty and hopelessness is the issue. So, so, so that would be my best offense, is to attack pervasive poverty um, and, and try to strengthen people first that way to, and to you be resilient. And you also mentioned education. Education, absolutely. Workforce is, training, education. is a great segue into your education committee. He's so good with segues. Yes, so I segue to this. You, what did you think? Have you met with Mary Ellen Ilya, the new education commissioner? I, I haven't had a chance. Well, let me say this. I haven't met with her uh, personally at the time. Uh, we had an acting commissioner, yeah. and we were in the process of budget hearings. Right. So, and, so, yeah. so my engagement with, with the commissioner's office as of late has been okay. more formal. Yeah. But are you look, have you read about her? Have, you, have, they, have they communicated to you as mm -hmm. being a member of the education committee? Uh, about her background, and have they? Uh, do you think she'll appear before the committee next we, year? Or? We would expect her to appear. We haven't really had much communication, and, and really off session. It's funny how, you know, it's just like turning off a light switch. Mm -hmm. A You're lot of Albany right. just disappears in, yeah. in the sea of district issues. And, and I thought, since you're a little more local, maybe you might be able to catch an audience with her. Or, you know. I, I, certainly, I, I do value all of our commissioners as partners, and I'm learning that others have left. Um, Peter Rivera in Department of Labor is gone. There's an, act, an acting commissioner there. Oh, okay. uh, the Department of Transportation has a new commissioner. So there's been a lot of, a lot of turnover for, yeah. for different reasons. I think uh, environmental conservation. I don't know. I, I heard rumors to that, but I haven't. That Joe haven't, Martins is leaving. Is he really? Yeah. So, so, so my challenge is, and this goes back to the minority aspect, I don't limit myself by enrollment. To, to me, right. effectiveness is a function of building coalitions, building dialogue, building trust. That's right. So with any of these agencies, if you were to ask the commissioners that I work with, they would probably say, we like Pete, we trust Pete. Uh, he's a straight shooter. Yep. Uh, he, he's constructive. He gives us advice and guidance, and we trust him. And that's what so, I've heard. So, exactly. so, that's, so for me, every time when there's a change in commission, I'm like, Oy vey. Uh -huh. Okay, I have to start all over again with well, but there personalities was, and trust. There was a change in commissioner of agriculture that you didn't have to get no, to know. No, that's true. Because he's from your district, my in neighbor. fact, your backyard. Yeah. He is, and he's a personal friend of your man, right. Richard Ball, is a commissioner of agriculture. Well, you should get him. So that was an easy change. So if they do more like that, yeah. well, you so should. we'll make you a commissioner. Rabbi, yeah, maybe yeah, you can you be you a go. commissioner. So well, that, he should be the great. commissioner of rabbis within yeah. the department. That would be great. You don't have an office there. you got to make a rabbi. Have to make, but, I, yeah. but I wanted huh. to uh, 
have you bring something back to the Commissioner of Agriculture. Okay. There is still no kosher food kiosk at the state fair. That's crazy. Thank you. That's crazy. That, and there needs to be. All right. And I've been working on this for oh, crazy. About five, six years now. All right. And I don't have my notepad with me, but I'm gonna knowing you, you, you remind me. That's right, I will. <laughs> but you really, I mean, I, the response that I got from this acting crazy. state fair. I can't believe it. The state yeah. fair director, the acting, com the acting director, yeah. was that, oh, they reached out and didn't hear back. Well, they probably just made a phone call. Yeah. I mean, they're not being proactive. And that's, that's you inexcusable. Know? Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, they have a vegan restaurant yeah. that's uh, from Syracuse sure. that's going to be in the state fair. That's a new vendor. Absolutely. There should be but a, a focus on kosher. And, you know, so and I have that, my next column in the Jewish yeah. Press that's, coming no, up that's this excellent. week. No, I you love know, that. So. You know, going back to the education, okay. though, one of yeah. the big uh, issues that was passed by the Senate but not by the Assembly, and I don't even know how you voted, was the Education Investment Tax Bill. Is that on my credit. Tax right. credit, excuse right. me. Right. And that's dear to our hearts because, of course, that would give more money to the Jewish day schools. Understood. And, and, and I, support, uh, I support differing methods of providing education. So, so our private schools I value. I value those who wish to homeschool. I value our public schools. I'm still open to charter schools, although my only challenge with charter schools is I like to see it balance. Mm -hmm. so, so Which the, way? What do you mean? Well, it's been brought to my attention that charter schools enjoy greater freedom with how they can educate. Public schools have more limitations. So I'd like to do a little balancing, a little weighing of the different models to make sure that each has an equal opportunity to provide well, the results that just came out showed that Eva Moskowitz, uh, her success academy in New York City, uh -huh. is doing extremely well right. in, the, in the test results and, and the success of her, of her group of charter schools. Albany is not doing as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you rise and fall sure. based on your own merits. You don't need the control. You don't need the right. government interference because you have... You know, so you have the results speak for themselves. Yeah. So if you don't get good results, the school closes and right. you move on. True, that's true. Then you got so, an abandoned building in your neighborhood, but a nice looking one. Right, right. I understand. <laughs> so, so I, I hear you. And I guess back to your question know. is, is I'm open to providing resources and supports that allow choice and and give us a chance to to work with different models. I don't see any one see. model as being. The, the ultimate yeah, but model. The but what did you do? The yeah, charter school seems to be more successful. Those are their percentages. And, and some are, some aren't. Some are, some aren't. And, yeah. and I guess I, I, I'm, I'm someone who likes to d dig in and, and do research. So I, I, I hate to make snap judgment. So my question would be, what is the student population? Do they have... Well, they're Do, picking they, and choosing. Are, is there some cherry picking there? Yeah. Some, people have, there? some people have said that uh, Eva Moskowitz yeah. should have been the state education mm -hmm. commissioner, that she should have been looked at. I right. mean, the, you have someone uh, who was a district superintendent in Florida right. who got fired, who they you know, brought in as uh, state right. education commissioner. So, I mean, it, it's like, whoa. And, and you know, so our public schools... Our, that? Is that the, the, the chancellor and the board of regents and... They pick right. the state education commissioner. Is there anything like like I know in the Congress, the Senate has to confirm a cabinet nope. Nope. member. They nope. don't do that. This is right. they're really autonomous, and our state education budget is larger than most state budgets. It's true, that's true. I mean, it's just amazing. Is and it and thirty here they, billion or and change, or yeah. thirty billion or so. So just so I guess back to the charter schools. Yes. So so there may be some cherry picking. I'd have to look at that. The other piece too is. In terms of students with, with disabilities, physical or emotional, you know, are, do charter schools are they carrying a representative proportion, or, or is that is that a heavier yeah, weight on the public saying. schools? I mean, I did talk to once to a I mean uh, to a friend who was an Orthodox Jew, right. yeah, but he taught in the public schools. Well, sure. you know, so I even confronted yeah. him with this many years ago. I says, "Hey, the public schools, you know, I guess so, it was not so nice. Yeah. I mean, he's a teacher." So, but he said, "He says, well, I'm going to give you an example." He says, "I had a child that was from sixth grade and went back to one of these Central American countries. I don't remember what did make a difference. Right. Didn't speak English. Comes back and now they're in the eighth grade." And two years in these third world countries, they didn't even get a public school education. Right. So for two years, they were doing nothing, not speaking English, and now they're in the eighth grade. Right. Well, of course, they're not going to do well on a test. What sure. am I supposed to do, he's saying. Sure. You know, so you're right about that. That's a counter-argument. 
we are cherry picking, you know, hey, charter schools, we're going to take the smartest and the best. And hey, look, we did a good job. So there, and you're I, I would say kids. it's not always the case, but there's a danger. And so my, my premise would be I'd like to give maximum flexibility and freedom to, to any educational institution so that they can, can raise a, a whole person. Because ultimately, when you think about it, we can only do so much in the classroom. How much of the, the ability of a student to learn and progress is affected by their outside world, their home mm -hmm. environment, and, and their, their neighborhood? So, uh, so how did you vote on the EITC when that came up? Wow. I have to go back. I believe I voted for it. Right. I'd have to go back and check my vote. Okay. Um, that, I think that happened when we were doing a vote like every every two minutes or so. I understand. Towards the but end this of was session. a but long debate. But this it. was a big debate. It was a heavily yeah. debated issue. And you yeah. sat through it because I was there and I watched you. I'm making well, sure you're in your seat. I, where you're I try to stay in my seat. I get okay. itchy britches now and then, <laughs> so I have to get up and stretch or <laughs> get a okay. little water. So, so, so well, let me. Will come up again next year? I mean, you're I'm sure you don't know. Yeah. You really don't know yet. Yeah. I mean, it depends how the speaker feel gonna be feels about it, or you know, if there are enough votes to bring it back on the floor, or you know, how they it how they very, resolve it, it with the state senate. It was a very senate. divided vote, and, and yeah. it was irrespective of party line. That's right. Yeah, it was very divided. So let me. You, I know that you're a, you like hiking. I do. Yeah. <laughs> so what's this bill you have that establishes a three-year hiking trail safety pilot program? Boy, you have been sifting through my bills. Yeah, hey, God, you he's a good busy. reporter, Mark. Busy. That's it. So, so, so on the more serious side, sober, the sober discussion is in my district. We have forever wild lands. We have very rugged terrain. And we have unfortunately had instances where there's been a loss of life in, in sections, particularly in the Catskill, uh, Green County and Ulster County, where individuals have gone on trails, have, uh, have no idea what to expect. They love nature. They know there's something beautiful to see. They go in flip-flops or sandals. Uh, they may go in, in poor conditions, weather conditions. Mm -hmm. And we've had serious injury and loss of life uh, in Catskill Falls, for example. Right. Uh, we, we had two deaths a year ago last summer. Um, to just fall. They don't know what they're doing and they're just Well, in one falling. case it was inappropriate footwear, in another case it, they didn't know what they were doing. So, my, so why do you so need the a three-year hiking trail safety pilot program? Why three years? Why not one or five? Well, it could or? be, well, you, you want to get some experience, you have to pick a number. But my premise would be, so for the general public, yes. I want to go enjoy the great outdoors. Here's a hiking trail. Okay, yes. so I go out and I may not be dressed properly. I may not be in the best condition. Mm -hmm. The weather may be working against me. I walk on a trail expecting to, to, to uh, enjoy nature, not realizing that the trail could be extremely dangerous, that, mm -hmm. that I may not be physically able to handle a given trail. So, so the best model I could use is the model used by our ski centers, where they have trails that are marked by, by the, the level Beginners. of, of mm -hmm. rigor. That's Beginners. Right. Yeah, so if there's a beginner trail, maybe that's handicapped accessible, and it may be rolling hills. And, and, and then you have others that are diamond or double diamond in, in ski snowboarding terms, expert trails. So they don't have anything like that? No, now. there's no indication. You walk out on the trail. And I was, I was horrified to see, in some cases, I'm a mile or two in hiking, and I see individuals with walkers. Yeah. And I see parents with trying to push strollers <laughs> over, over, over trails that are I've more like that. a stream bed. I've seen that. And may actually have water flowing and be slippery and yeah. lost I actually had a thing. It was, uh, unfortunately, it was in Massachusetts. Yeah. Don't throw me out of New York State. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. But in any case, it was in New York. And Say we went again. on some right. trail. Say that again. All right, they did go to Mass. It's only an hour. Okay, that's And right. we went to a trail, we huh. and it really was almost dangerous. Yeah. We went in trail, no one was around, and we really got lost, no markers. I can right. almost, so, so and I almost got like, how do we get back? The exactly. only, and we were going round and round. I said, just we have to remember how to, you know, right. and that was the only way we got so on right. You, still you said there. that when we yeah, went to and Tannersville right. and you, and you <laughs> didn't know the roads and, and, and you were saying, you just get worried, right. you know. And you're, you're I in was good lost and, and there was no markers I could right. relate so to So imagine that. bringing someone who, who, who um, is right. injured yeah. or, again, is not prepared, something happens. Okay, two, so, so basically you're looking to have the trails marked. I think he's moving us along. Yeah. Yes, we are. Of easy, it's a safety medium, issue. It's yeah. a safety okay. issue. And, and right. again, that's the, what I'm saying. The intent it really is, is needed. Allow people to enjoy nature, but but have a realistic expectation of what they're going to encounter. Put up a sign if you're. That's what they put on the Ferris wheel. You know, hey, if you have a heart condition, don't, don't do come it. here or something so what, like that. So that you bill know? did it go anywhere this year? We, we've recession? had some discussion. It did not. We've no, had okay. some discussion with DEC, and I'm going to I'm going to pursue them a little okay. more aggressively on it. Excellent. And and again. 
the, 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 the more sobering aspect of it is people are getting hurt right. or, or, or worse. Or killed, yeah. yeah. So now you got another bill. Oh, another bill. He's that says busy. prohibits the percentage of disbursements from the state lottery fund oh, yeah. that goes towards education aid yeah. from falling below 45.15%. Actually, I think I was looking to expand. So why, yeah. why did you choose such an odd number, 45.15%? Yeah. Why is that a special magic number? Oh, now you're, so I wrote that and, bill a few years ago, but, but it's, let me, it was a bill from this past session. So let me address the, the issue broadly. Sure, so, so, yeah, broadly. So people say, okay, where does my lottery money go? Right. All right, and the answer is to, to the, education. But the right. general but, fund. But the lion's mm -hmm. share, of the money actually goes to promotion and prizes. It's only a small percentage, maybe 20, 30% of the total revenue that goes back to education. Mm. So, so the argument that I had with the, with the division of the lottery, which hates the bill, by the way, oh, okay. was make your purses smaller, give more of them, and give more to education. Yeah. So I just picked the number, okay, and and said, you know, the, so and the prize is too high, and obviously the more the prize you give, the less. So the well, stake is. their their argument is the bigger the prize, the more who can do can. the lottery thing? The lottery is no, eighty million dollars, right. right? You know, and and um, so ultimately, in their mind, that's the sole reason for someone buying a ticket. My argument was no, not necessarily. If my next door neighbor wins a thousand for life, and I see that play out more often, and I get encouraged that I don't have to win 80 million, maybe I win 200,000, right. but I have a better chance, maybe I'll play. So my argument was reduce the, pri the purses, make them more available, and then take, and my prediction was that revenue from a marketing standpoint would stay the same or increase because you have more people buying tickets because they think they can win, even though the prizes are smaller, and give a greater share to education. Now we have a lot of people watching. I did that in one breath. Did we have, a, that? That we have a lot of people oh. watching who are from volunteer fire and ambulance companies. Yes. And they're God gonna be them. sitting on the edge of their seat because you have a bill that relates to rates charged to volunteer fire For companies. For electricity? And volunteer ambulance companies. So what, is that what are these rates and all this? Electricity. It's Elec electric rates that Elec are charged That should to? be the electric rate bill. Okay. So in essence... You want them to... Not to be charged a commercial rate. Okay. You want them to be charged a residential rate? because they We sleep, want them to have a lower rate. But they don't sleep there because they're volunteer. That's right. But they also raise funds and, right. and have to do all sorts of additional work besides doing their job as volunteers. They have to hold fundraisers, bake sales. Yeah. So, so in my my opinion, so when it comes to volunteerism, is we want to make it easier to be a volunteer. So National Grid should kind of be nice people and just sort of give them a reduction. Well, it, it's it, it's yes. Okay. I would say so. It's not that simple, of course. It's because <laughs> National Grid will just spread it over the rate base. That's right. So ultimately, the, the community as a whole will pay it, more. Yeah. But my sense is, if we target that benefit to volunteerism, which is at risk, particularly in rural areas, yeah. we have trouble retaining people and, and filling shifts. So any way we can, can help support volunteers and reduce the pressure on them to stay in business, the better. Uh, okay. That's my observation. You know, ben, like he's, got his, he's, he's, he's got more. I do, he I does. do. He does, he's got a million of what, them. What is this Kinder, you call on Kinship kin, care. Kinder Morgan oh, Kinder to Morgan. abandon pipeline proposal. Yes. And you see gas project as an unnecessary duplication, imposition on the region. Now he's hitting the, the softball questions are gone now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like you only have a few more minutes yeah, that, that, you'll be yeah, out yeah, of the hot So, so what is that, that? Who's this Kinder Morgan and what are they doing? They're building a pipeline a, a parallel to the uh, Constitution pipeline? They are. So Kinder Morgan has has some components. Tennessee Gas is one of their yeah. one of part of their consortium. So we just went through a very uh, divisive and uh, difficult uh, discussion along the I-8 corridor, running from Pennsylvania to Schoharie County, yeah. <clears throat> about the, the premise of installing natural gas lines and making that available. And it's shale gas, which made it even more controversial. So, so it wasn't just gas; it's fracking gas. That's right. So, so this whole issue has been very divisive. The the issue has been uh, largely decided by the federal government, which has the, the sole authority, authority yeah. for, for regulating and approving the, the transmission. 
Uh, on the backs of the approval for the Constitution pipeline, which is still in limbo to some extent, awaiting some final permitting, Kinder Morgan said, oh yes, here we are, and we're going to just jump right on top of this, yeah. this proposal and put another line in, which, which just opened all the wounds again in the community. Because some people are concerned, obviously, about um, safety. Some people are concerned about eminent domain. Others are championing the, the availability right. of low-cost natural gas at a fraction of the cast. So you, how do you fault you say it's no good? So, so for Kinder Morgan, my answer is, hey guys, we really don't want you. You're not going to provide anything new to our community. You're just using us as as a crossroads. So, and, okay. So we put another high high pressure gas line through our community. So, so I would say to you, so it's your backyard, Mark Ronick. Mm -hmm. Right, and you already have one pipeline. Now another company wants to put another pipeline. I would say to you, yeah. So what would your answer be? Give me some money if you're going show through me my the, property. Show me the dough. Show yeah. me the money. Yeah. So, Maybe. but but that's not everything to everyone. So some people may say, because and all they're going to give you. People just need an issue. Sometimes. All they're going to give you is the appraised it's like value. The, it's like the oil the, tankers. Yeah. Going through Albany County, I say, yeah. well, then if you don't like them, put up a retaining wall, a nice yeah. decorative yeah. retaining it's, wall. It's not and, even. It's you not know, even like with, with the hydrofracking where you would get a royalty. You don't. Mm -hmm. they, they give you uh, the, the value, the appraised value of that little piece right. that, that they secure the easement on. Okay. So, so if that changes the complexion of your property and all you're getting well, is... There's always negotiation. Yeah. So then you say no if they don't. So He's Kinder something. Morgan. Kinder in Yiddish is kid, children. children. Right. Morgan, death. Tomorrow. No, no. No, Morgan. No, it means tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow's children. Yeah. Wow. Tomorrow's okay. world. That's a, very, in that's a profound uh, title. So, okay. So, so they're talking about tomorrow's children and giving them guess a better world. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> okay. Better that's world. Okay. Better world. That's a better world. world. Exactly. <laughs> so, okay. So, so my so my premise again on Kinder Morgan, we had a lighter note, is that uh, I just see it as a, a duplication. Okay. And there's no material benefit to the to the host communities. All right. We, Thank we you. pay all the debt. And okay. All right. Excellent. Listen, Peter. That we. Uh, thanks for coming you back. I guess best. Mark wasn't, you guys are the best. wasn't too and this guy uh, tough on you. I guess. Precocious as ever. We want you to come again. So, so I, I hope Mark to. wasn't too tough That's on you. He <laughs> had some sleeper questions. He was waiting for. Yeah, no, half hours. I know. We did duck behind the curtain. That's right. No. Next time. Next time. Okay. Keep on doing your good work. We'll see you in session soon enough. We'll put you back to work over here. Well, I never. Stop working. That's there right. you go. I'm Much sure, but at least in Albany. Be well. Thank you. Thanks so much.